When a patient comes for an atrial fibrillation procedure, our goal is to isolate the pulmonary veins. What does that mean? We're trying to short circuit the muscle that lives in the pulmonary veins. These are veins that are bringing blood from the lungs into the heart. We're trying to disconnect that electricity so that we ablate outside of the veins, but within the top chamber of the heart, so that electricity can't get in or out, but blood could flow in or out. When that happens, the trigger or the inciting factor for atrial fibrillation remains what we call isolated. And we do that for all the pulmonary veins on the left and right side of the heart. When a patient comes for an ablation procedure here at Mayo, we want to exceed their expectations. Our nurses are critical in making sure that patients are comfortable, they know that they're safe, and they're very experienced at this. Our anesthesia team. This is an exceptional team. They're gonna make sure that the patient's prepped for anesthesia, prepared for what to expect, and all the boxes are checked and nothing's missed. The proceduralist, someone that does cardiac catheter ablations, will meet with the patient, make sure they're okay with the plan, they wish to proceed, and they have the proper expectations of what's going to happen that day. There's several technicians monitoring your blood pressure, checking how thin your blood is, uh, drawing blood work, and then there's also people on the outside of the room that are looking and communicating, making sure that the patient is doing well from a hemodynamic standpoint, and they're also driving some of the catheters with electrical stimulations. For catheter ablation procedures, when we do it for atrial fibrillation, the patients will be brought into the room and they'll be put under general anesthesia. Now, that means they'll have a breathing tube down their throat, and anesthesia will monitor them so that we're breathing for them. They also won't feel any pain or discomfort throughout the procedure, and we're monitoring them to make sure everything's going on with their heart, their blood pressure, their lungs, breathing oxygen, everything's taken care of. The first thing we do is get access to the heart, and we do that by accessing the vessels in the patient's groin. We go from the groin so that we get to the left side of the heart, which is where the problems for atrial fibrillation lie. So we use ultrasound so we could see what we're doing. And with a small wire, we're able to introduce what we call sheets. It's like putting little baby straws into the vessels. Not painful for the patients, but a way in there so that we maintain access to the veins. We use x-ray so that we could watch our wires, our sheets, and our catheters go up slowly and carefully up into the heart. And while we're doing this, we're bringing catheters that help us throughout the procedure, maintain safety. In addition to safety is efficacy. So giving you the best possible chance for a good outcome of the ablation procedure. The majority of our cases here at Mayo Clinic, we use radio frequency ablation. So what we do is when we're touching the tissue that we want to destroy, we send current through it. And that ends up heating and killing the tissue. Sometimes, if we're in other areas, critical areas, we'll use freezing. So same difference, so we're just using thermal ablation, so we're either heating or cooling the tissue to where it dies off and doesn't come back again. We're trying to create scar outside of the pulmonary veins. We're not at the point yet with our technology or understanding to know how to get 100% durable isolation every time. And that's part of why we say we cannot cure atrial fibrillation, but we could treat it. So some patients need a drug, some patients need ablation, some patients need ablation plus a drug, and some patients need ablation plus a drug, and sometimes they often need a second ablation. I think it's very normal for a patient to wonder or be worried about a procedure coming up. I always tell my patients that I'm going to be on them like a hawk, and so is my team in the room. We're doing everything we can to make sure that you're safe, and that we also make you feel better. Afterwards, we'll talk and go after everything we found throughout the surgical procedure so that you're informed. Whoever you've brought with you, a family member or a friend is informed and that you have a plan going forward. Then usually patients go home that same day. As long as the patient's safe, we're able to let them go home if they're comfortable. If not, we keep them overnight and monitor them. We maintain one-to-one -one contact with our patients. So we make sure that not only did you do well during the procedure, but the procedure was successful for you, the procedure was safe for you, and afterwards we follow up to make sure you benefited from the procedure. If we could make your quality of life better, then I think it's all worth it.